So today I'm going to go over all of the things to do with post-harvest packaging and things to look for in a quality of a berry and what we're trying to achieve as far as a small grower who's just starting out or somebody who might need a few tips on ways to better present their product for local growing. The first thing we start with is harvesting always and you have to always think about first what is your market. If you're doing a direct market most people are going to be picking into something like this small bucket. It shouldn't be any bigger than one gallon. When you go to a two gallon, like this size here, you're going to end up with a lot of smushed berries on the bottom and you don't want that. So you want to st stick with something like this, a one gallon bucket size, no bigger. has a nice uh, handle on it so that it won't tip over and come out. And the nice thing about these is that they can be lined with a bag and, gr and people can come out, pick their berries in here and then, they'll, then you can just pull out the bag and reuse your container. They're also washable, which is very important right now. Something that's a variant on that is called a busket, and the difference with this is it has ventilation holes in the side. Sometimes these are used for commercial type or if you're going to a local market with these because it allows you to pick more efficiently if you don't have much labor. The idea of these is you have the opening in the side to allow circulation of air, so you don't have a lot of heat compacted inside on the berries. You have to be very careful that these are smooth. If it's rough, it'll tear up the berries themselves. And again, they should have the lids or the, the handles so that it doesn't rock uh, itself apart and you end up tipping all the berries out into the bed. If you're a commercial grower, you pretty much are limited to a selection of a clamshell. And a clamshell is called that because it has a hinge lid. And these are a nice change. What used to be used were these right here. These are called paper or mulch type containers. Uh, these were widely used in the industry probably not until about the mid-1980s. These had the vent holes in the side and they have the nice paper mulch. They're very lightweight, they're very inexpensive. The problem is you can't seal the top and if you're a consumer that means you have to go home and put them in something else. They also tend to be, because you can't seal the top, they're much more likely to get weight loss from the berries. So what you end up with here is how it would look. You have your vent holes here. This is very important because you want air to move through here. You want to get cool air moving through the basket of fruit so you can remove all the field heat. The more heat you have in strawberries, and the longer it's there, the more decay and breakdown you're going to get. So less heat, cooler temperatures means longer shelf life. Now, here's an example of a clamshell I would not recommend for strawberries or any small fruit. These are really a deli box. They have no ventilation holes in them at all. It's great for salad, not so great for a berry. A berry has to have breathing space, has to be able to pull in cool air, and also has to be able to respire. So you're not going to want this sort of thing. The other uh, disadvantage of this type of box is you see there's no way to keep it from sliding off the other one. Uh, if you take this, this is a, a traditional commercial size quart strawberry container. It's so a one pound box, basically, they call it a one pound. Uh, there's usually a bit of an indentation in the lid so that you can set one on top of the other and it's really good for retail displays because they won't be falling off. The other nice thing about a clamshell is that they're usually used to be reopened. This one, in this particular style, has little hooks here so that you can open and close it, which is really a good consumer friendly type package. It can come in many styles. Uh, particularly the slits and the number of holes. These have holes here and they have holes on the bottom and they have holes on the side. So the idea is to get penetration of air but still have the body of your strawberry protected so you can get air movement in and out. And what you should see when you have a good pack is something like this where you have nice glossy berries with little bruising or damage. A bad pack is going to look something like this. You see a lot of bruising here. And this happened because either because the berries were jumbled around too much or it happened in the field and they weren't properly selected. Now one of the things that you have to look for when you're picking is you want to pick a clean pack. In this case, we have problems with these berries are old. Uh, on top of that, we have foreign material in here. This will get you in trouble in a hurry. If you're doing commercial sales, this will get a load rejected. Also, these berries are all rejects, basically except maybe for this one. 
Uh, you can tell that some of these are dried out. They're not well ripened. Uh, they're downright soft. They easily dent. We have some other examples here. Uh, this one is what I would call lack of ripeness. It's picked a little bit immature. And so you have a lot of white on that fruit. It's not very sweet. The other problem here is this is the sepal, the green part. Here's a fresh berry. Nice and green, nice and turgid, nice and glossy. Makes you want to eat it, nice and red. This one doesn't look bad. The sepal's a little bit more dried out and start to turn brown, then they really look bad and consumers don't want to touch them. And if you look at this, this particular pack came from the store and it's probably been sitting there for probably five days. The interesting thing is, here's a freshly picked one. Here's one from the store. They both look very glossy. Calyxes is still nice and bright green, which tells me that they had good cooling all the way along the line, that there was a really good chain, cold chain here. And when you're talking strawberries, it's all about cold. We can't do much with them when they come out of the field. Usually these are picked in the field. They're put in their final box in the field. So if you're a commercial operation, you're trying to grow for Walmart or Food Lion or somebody like that, they're going to request that you put, be packing right in here in the field. And then once you get them in the field, you're going to be putting them as masters here. These masters hold, will hold, depending on the size that you have, they can hold, if you're doing pints, they'll usually have 12 pints in one of these containers, or you might have six quarts. Not usually arranged this way, but this is the closest we could come to a master that would fit. Uh, one thing to notice about masters, they have reinforced corners so that you can stack one on top of the other and it won't smush the fruit down. They also have these little tabs and these little tabs are made to join together so that they also add sturdiness to the pack when it's sitting on a pallet. And they also have the holes in the side, again for forced air cooling so you can move air through the pack and get good ventilation. And they also provide some protection. So these are very fragile on their own, but having these in here, it gives them quite a bit more stability when they're going down the road so they don't jostle all over the place and get bruised. Now, one of the problems I was going to go over here, some classic things you don't want to see in your fruit. Bruising is this, when you have these dark spots, and many times this is hard to catch until it's been sitting in the cold room for a few days. So the, the more gentle you are when you pick them, the less likely you are to have bruising. And if you don't jostle them when they're going into the cold room, that's important too, because sometimes you can't see this until it's far too late to sort them. If you're doing any kind of pre-sort or post-sort in the grading area, if you're doing a check before you set them on that semi-truck load, you don't want to see this. This is to the point of being leaky. It's very, very soft. It may be getting decay, it may just be water soaked from, from too much rain, uh, but this will lead to a lot of problems down, downstream because these will leak and you end up getting this, mold. And the one thing you don't ever want a consumer to see or the person who's going to be approving your load is this. This is botrytis. It's a very common mold in strawberries. It's the number one problem. Strawberries don't have much protection from mold or anything else because they have no rind. They're not a cantaloupe. They're not an apple. So what you see is what you get and have a very thin skin.